Talk to me, please. Testing, testing. <coughs> testing, testing. One, two, three. All right, here we go. Welcome back to the Game Smash Podcast. As always, I'm your host, from Liberty, and with me is... Boaz Muhammad Yusuf. And today, we've got some stuff. We've got PlayStation Plus and Games of Gold for the month of May. We've got Joker announced for the Injustice 2. We've got the 2DS XL reveal. We've got Call of Duty World War II reveal. And then we've got Marvel Infinite details. Before we get into that, let's talk about what we played this week. So, big surprise. What game do you think I played? Persona 5. I played more Persona 5. There's really not much I can say about it unless I start spoiling the story, but I don't want to. So, I swear to God, Tyler. Um, I actually know where you live. What? I said, I, said, I swear to God, Tyler, I actually know where you live. So, you, you better mind yourself. <laughs> mind myself. Them. I will say it kind of sucked, though, to spite all the insanity. I somehow... Um, I did get spoiled on something that pissed me oh. off. Um, but uh, it was one of those situations in which when I, when I saw the spoiler, I had kind of called it from the beginning. So it wasn't as painful as it could have been. Okay. So it was one of those things where it's like, all right, it sucks that I know this now, but I kind of had guessed that this was a possibility. So that's pretty cool. Um, that's really about it. Uh, other than that, I played a bunch of Overwatch. Uh, I kind of just gave up on uh, just getting the uh, Mercy skin from a pack because I knew I wasn't going to have enough time. Yeah. So I just bought the skin. I have it now. Yay. Um, yeah, we, because me and Fawaz, we played some Overwatch together and that was, that was fun. And we were talking about how Uprising has this one problem with people just don't want to stay and I don't understand why. Yeah. I don't understand. I like, like, literally, it's like, the, for people people that just leave the game, like that one Torb that left the game, there's literally no, the only reason that I think he was leaving the game was he kept on, like, dying, but that didn't, that didn't, fucking didn't, idiot. But, but, but that, the, the thing about that is that it didn't matter, even though he was still dying, I could just revive him, or I could just pick him up, and then we could continue on, and we would have won that if he hadn't have left. And yeah. a lot of the times on normal mode, like, usually it's like, okay, if, especially if you're playing normal mode, which is one of the easier difficulties for this mode in particular, there's literally no reason why you should leave. There's literally no reason because it is a free win as long as you stay. Like, you have to yeah. be really bad to fail at uh, normal mode. So that's why I was a little bit baffled by that. And it sucks because I like I really do enjoy the mode. It's just I don't understand this mentality of people like, oh, we're, we're losing the fight, uh, whatever, time to leave. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh. It's the reason why I stopped playing the mode entirely. Um, I, for people who follow the channel, people who follow the channel will notice that I never actually posted a video of me successfully completing the mode because eventually I just got tired of people leaving. I completed it once and I was like, I'm not touching. I completed it once, but I didn't have my mic in. And I was like, I'm not touching this mode again. And that was that. Was that. Uh, it's a shame. It's a real shame. because It's I, a real I, shame because the mode is, is a lot of fun. It's a but really it's, good mode. And I feel like it's just... Uh, I yeah. just feel like... For me, keep... anyway, it's only fun on the higher difficulties. Because on, on the lower difficulties, it's too easy, right? And, well, you know, easy, I, the, the, reason, the reason why I like the lower difficulties is because it gives me free packs. Yeah. Yeah, but um, but but yeah, like um, it's it's just not fun for me on the lower difficulty. So I put it on the high difficulty, but on the high difficulty, people leave, and when people leave, it's impossible. It's actually impossible to like we were playing on the second lowest difficulty. One person left, and we couldn't do it. So yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean that's really what I played this week. I'm trying to think of anything else. Yeah, no, other than that, uh, well, honestly, it's not video game related, but I just watched a shit ton of, uh, of uh, Samurai Jack, yeah. And uh, I'm actually up to season five, so shit's getting real. Oh, shit, shit, shit. I need to, I need to step my shit up. You're, you're getting past me. Yeah, well, I, I, I had a day off, so I just blitzed through season four. And uh, mm -hmm. and then went straight to season five. Although the thing that sucks now is that because I've been blitzing through the episodes so fast, it's like now it's like no, now I'm gonna have to wait a week. <laughs> wait, wait, you're caught up? No, I'm not it's... caught up. I'm but uh... but like it's each episode is like 23 minutes, right? And then like I've got maybe four left, 
So, so that's like two hours. Yeah, so I'm going to be caught up relatively soon. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that's what I did this week. What about you, Fawaz? Okay. So I'm going to preface what I'm about to say with a little bit of a um, um, disclaimer. I, I realized that in the last semester of school, I've started cursing a lot more. And I'm, I'm, you know, I'm going to make it like real talk. I'm going to make it a goal over the course of the summer to cut back on the cursing. However, before I do that, I'm putting a little bit of money into the swear jar uh -huh. because yesterday was one of the most frustrating days I've ever had with Overwatch, period. So first of all, fuck Capture the Flag. That mode is, is so bad. It is so little fun. And, like, it is just a piece of shit. Like, straight up, that mode is a piece of shit. And I hope whoever... Okay, I'm, not, I'm not about to curse out someone's job and someone's livelihood over a mode. But that mode is bullshit. Okay, so, 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 so. Um, you noticed yesterday when we were playing that you... They, they brought Capture the Flag back. And then because they brought it back, if you want a game in it, you, you got a loot box, right? Yeah. Now... I, for some reason, I just couldn't let this one loot box go. I was like, that okay, you know what? It's just, it's just, I just need to win one game of Capture the Flag. How long will it take? Never ask that question. No, 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 no never no, ask no, that. Never question do that because you, you won't like the answer. So, um, it took me three, maybe four hours to get one win in Capture the Flag. About eighty percent of the games I played in those four hours ended in draws. Like, just my favorite, my absolute favorite was when we were leading by two. And then the opposing the opposing team gets two caps in the span of one minute. That was that was so much fun. Um, we listen by two the entire game, and then and then and then they, they get the cap in, in in like a minute. My other the other one I I really enjoyed was when I went to the when we all six of them came to our base and stole our flag. Six of us went to their base and stole their flag, and then we just avoided each other, and then we both capped because you know some idiot didn't think that like. It's the, this is the only capture the flag game mode I've ever seen where your flag doesn't have to be in your base for you to cap, you know? So we just, like, avoided each other and we just capped it. It's like, okay, now we haven't actually done anything because now it's tied. Yeah. It was, it's so, so unbelievably, such an unbelievably stupid mode. The runtime, like, the second they get your flag, if they get out of your base, it's over. You can't catch them. It's, it's a cap because the space... The distance between the flags is too small, you know? Yeah. So everything about this mode is just poorly designed. However... You already know all of this, Tanner. We went on. We went on this. We, we talked about this before. Yeah. Yeah. What I discovered yesterday, and like Tanner, I kid you not, if I actually met this person in real life, I would have choked them straight up. I'm not exaggerating. Just I would have full on rage. Yeah, I like rage. I would have killed somebody because I wouldn't. But I would have choked this guy until he lost consciousness. So this is what I discovered last night. I'm playing capture the flag, right? Mm. My team gets two caps in the first like. 30 seconds okay then we get the flag right uh -huh. the third time because it's first to three right yeah and then they bring the flag back to our base and then the dude refuses to cap and i'm like oh my god this guy's trying to troll them right yeah. he just he just sits around with, in front of our base with the flag nobody on the other team is competent enough to kill him to let one of us get the flag and cap so i'm just sitting there for like four or five minutes just waiting 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 and then the time ran out and i realized something horrible about that mode if someone is holding on to the flag the game never ends oh no are you serious it just goes into overtime you stay in permanent overtime <laughs> oh no that's a full that's a new level of trolling that i have yet to see that is i swear to god Man, like, I should never get my hands on, on that bastard that was playing with Stick. I don't care how big that dude is. Like, that <laughs> that, that fool is getting choked straight up. Oh, up. my if, God. If that that is hilarious. Feet, oh, One way or another, like, I was just sitting there, and, like, he, was, he just sat there, right? And, mm -hmm. then, and, then, and then overtime hits, and I'm like, why hasn't the game ended? And then the, the wick isn't going down. And then, I, and then I, I, I come to the horrible realization that until this bastard caps... Or someone on the other team kills him and returns the flag. This game is never going to end. I think I, I, I lost track of how long we stayed in that game for. But eventually, someone finally killed the bastard. And then they returned the flag. I got my cap. And let me explain how, like, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to take a break from Overwatch. Like, see, I still love Overwatch as a mm -hmm. game, right? Yeah. But I had, 
that experience with capture the flag has made me so angry that like the hatred has carried over from that mode and has trickled into overwatch as a game and i'm just gonna have to take a break because mm-hmm. like like this this is like is like, it... did you watch age of ultron yeah i watched age of ultron okay did you hate that movie um i didn't hate it but i wasn't like like impressed by it i guess okay have you heard of the blacklist it's a tv show no i haven't heard of the black okay that's a tv show the blacklist the protagonist of the blacklist voiced ultron in age of ultron right yeah yeah yeah. one of my friends hated age of ultron so much that he stopped watching the blacklist because why (laughs) because because of of, what's that word of of, he attribution you know because it's like you know Every time he hears the protagonist from the Blacklist talk, he remembers Age of Ultron. Yeah. So like, Age of Ultron ruined the Blacklist for him. That's where I'm at right now, and I'm going to have to take a break from Overwatch because Capture the Flag, like, I don't care if they give you a hundred loot boxes. I'm never touching that mode again. Ever again. Oh, my God. That, oh, anyway, anyway, anyway. So I got that. I actually didn't curse as much as I thought I would. So nah, that's good. You that's, know, that's, you that's know good. I'm already making progress. In more positive news, I also played Odin Sphere, Left the Red Blue, whatever the last name of that game. That's awesome. Awesome. Why didn't you get that? Yeah, so, funny story. Hey! I, uh, also, screw you, Tata, because <laughs> now I'll always notice when I say funny story. So thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Uh, uh, but yeah, when I bought Neo, mm-hmm. Sony were having a sale where if you spent a hundred dollars in the PlayStation Store, you got fifteen dollars back. So I bought I was buying Neo for eighty bucks. Mm-hmm. So then I looked for something else that was on the store, and Odin Sphere was on sale for like thirty bucks. And I was like, hey, you know, I wanted to buy this game when it came out. Why mm-hmm. not? So I picked it up, and it, it's 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 fun. Mm-hmm. It's um. It's a good bit of fun so far. I'm still in the first section because wh- how it works is that it's four, four standalone stories that sort of interact with each other. And then the fifth, uh, it gives you different perspectives on this big war. And then the fifth story gives you the true perspective. Yeah. So I'm still on the first story where you're playing this Valkyrie. The combat system, I was worried that it would be very button mash- button mashy, mm-hmm. but um. I made it to the second boss, and he, and the second boss alone, I, I, I tried to just bat, mash my way through it, and, you know, I got my ass kicked. So, yeah. so, so there's yeah, a, there I, is I already had to it. slow yeah. down and actually start learning the system. And so, you know, shout-outs to them for that. I'm looking forward to, I'm going to I'm, I'm gonna give the game a, a good try. I'm also going to go back to Neo, but, like, um, yeah. Right mm-hmm. now, I just want to, because, like, I already, I, I'm already into Neo, so, like, I just have to get back into it, whereas I want to make sure that I get into Odin Sphere, otherwise it ends up like you know shadow of mordor <laughs> yeah it's gonna, <laughs> it's gonna be... that i keep trying to get back into but something is always in the way so i'm yeah. gonna like try to make sure i get into this game sink like a solid two or three hours and then i'll mm-hmm. start like branching out and playing other things you know um but yeah it's fun the art style is amazing oh, um yeah. They fixed one of the biggest issues with the PS2 version, which was the horrible frame rate. Mm-hmm. And uh, all in all, I'm looking forward to to the story. I'm actually I'm actually looking for. I love stories like that, where, where you know you have like a bunch of short stories that all give different perspectives, and then yes. one story that sort of like puts everything together. I I I've always loved that I narrative really technique. Like that a lot, so I'm looking yeah. forward to it. I well, I like. I just think it's a good. It's it's because it, it gives you a more broader perspective on like the world itself. So yeah. I think that's always really fascinating when games or shows do that. Um, but yeah, no cool stuff. I guess we'll just get into some news. Um, so PlayStation Plus and Games of Gold. Uh, so PlayStation Plus, uh, Tales of the Borderlands, and Abzu, if you're in America. And if you're in Europe, it's Tales of the Borderlands and Alienation. <laughs> I was so angry. So first of all, I see Alienation, and I'm like, holy shit, the prophecy was true. Because, okay, so... Uh, Quick um, aggression. When Alienation came out, I didn't buy it because I knew it was going to be on PlayStation Plus eventually, and I was like, I'm just going to wait. Yeah. Uh, and then when I, when I, you know, when I saw this, I was like, Yep, there you go. I was right. And then I see it's only for Europe, and I'm like, Ah, crap. You win this time. It's PlayStation Plus. <laughs> but uh, it's a pretty shit month, right? Well, yeah, it's um. For, for me, it's like, I, I personally, I think Tales of the Borderlands is one of the better Telltale games, so if you haven't played it, I would say give it a try, I because cause it's like, because for me, it's like, the thing, the difference is that, like, I like Tales of the Borderlands, because 
one, it's actually a pretty funny game. And we don't really get that many comedy games. And, uh... Mm. Like, there's not... It, it, it's, it's weird, but it's like, I can't think of any many comedy games that come out as often as maybe because i feel like there are comedy games were a lot more popular at least on the playstation 2 generation or even earlier than that whereas comedy games aren't exactly right right. yeah so that that's why i'm like i was actually pretty i actually did like tales of the borderlands a lot because it gave me it it made me reminisce a bit about that kind of era um and plus handsome jack in the game is just absolutely fantastic so but handsome jack was good in borderlands too (laughs) So it's just it's just more of him, and that that's worth the purchase in my opinion. Um, yeah. And uh, but yeah, even so, it sucks because yeah, I really wanted Alienation to be <laughs> in North America, but alas. Um, but do we want to? Um, but the I mean, Exer sure coming eventually. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure. But there's also the Exer demo, which is part of this. That is huge. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 Um, if, you, if, you, if you recall about uh, PlayStation Plus, right? Mm-hmm. And I was like, that's one thing that I feel like Sony can. And then, um, oh, uh, and, and then, um, um, so, and, and I was, and, and I was gonna come into this month because we, we had seen the lists, and I was gonna come into this podcast ranting about it. In, in between the, then and now, though, they announced that they're getting the Guilty Gear Extra Rev Two demo. Uh, which is insane. This is this is really cool. This is you know you know shout out to Sony. Like uh, they they were listening to the podcast. They were like, holy shit, for us it's right. We need to step our shit up. And they were like, <laughs> they called up a- Axis or Arc, Re- whatever Arxis. whoever the developer is. Yeah. And they were like, that yo, we need to get something for for us. You know, f- so he stopped shitting on on, on us on his <laughs> podcast. And they were like, yo, we got we got you, bam. So they got the rev demo. It's huge because it's like it's not it's it's a demo, you know. Um, full characters, every single character plus the two new characters. Um, there's uh, there's a tutorial for all the um, for 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 beginners, which is really cool because I'm like that, you know. I'm trying, I'm gonna try and get Tanner into this game. I'm gonna try to try to get Jason into this game. This demo, although Jason's PlayStation Plus has run out, if, if I'm not mistaken. Sorry for putting you on blast for me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I'm gonna try to get as many people as I can into this game, and then the tutorials are gonna go a long way in helping with that because this is not an easy game, plain and simple. Mm-hmm. And then you know, it's got like it's got your versus mode. I think it's got the online versus mode, and it's got the training mode. So um, pretty cool. Um, I, uh, cause like a little while back, I was, I can't remember if it was you, I was telling, I was telling someone that if it wasn't for Overwatch, I would have canceled my PlayStation Plus subscription. I can't remember the last PlayStation Plus game I actually put any time into. I can't remember the last one I beat. It's probably Guacamelee, which is like two or three years ago. So this is good. This is good. I'm, I'm really excited. I'm definitely going to be picking this up. I'm going to try and get as many of my friends to pick it up as possible. Mm -hmm. Realistically speaking, I know most of them won't because... Fighting games aren't easy. And then, in the realm of fighting games, Guilty Gear is not an easy fighting game. So, so I, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if, if no one really picked this up. What well, one thing this does confirm is that I'm not picking up Injustice 2. Oh, not okay. at launch, at least. Maybe, yeah. maybe, like, down the line when they have the Game of the Year edition with all the extra content. But definitely not at launch. Injustice 2 drops May 16th. I think I will mm-hmm. be knee deep in Guilty Gear at that point. Um, Guilty Gear. Let's not forget that I, I still got to pick up Persona 5. Yeah. <laughs> and that's so, a time sink. Like it's. I I'm only like maybe halfway through the game, and it's been almost a month. Yeah. So I will neither have the time nor the money for. And I like like I said, I'm not that interested in the game. I'm, I'm more interested in the story. So um. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'll neither have the time nor the money. So I'm definitely. Won't be picking up Injustice Two. Alrighty. Um, but, I, but I guess the other thing is that Games of Gold uh, just came uh, came out as well, and uh, Games of Gold is kind of eh, this it's month. It's a pretty bad month. Yeah. Just, just call it like it is. It's not a great month. I mean, like it's a great yeah. month if you're a Star Wars fan, I guess. But honestly, Force Unleashed Two is not that great, in my opinion. I mean, st- Force Unleashed Two is booty butt cheeks. Okay, Force Unleashed One was mediocre and then they released an even worse sequel <laughs> yeah 
then you've got Lego Star Wars, the complete saga, and it's like Lego games, they're shovelware at this point. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. And you got Lara Croft and the Temple of Osiris, which PlayStation Plus got like what two years ago? Yeah. And then and then you've got this what what's this Giana Sisters Twisted? Yeah, whatever. This seems like kind of shit that we get on PlayStation Plus. Yeah, this is a pretty pretty bad month. Um, mm-hmm. Honestly, this has been a bad month all around, were it not for Guilty Gear. But um yeah, really shitty month for games with gold. Um, solid month for PlayStation Plus, especially if you're a fighting game fan, and and mm-hmm. especially if you're a Guilty Gear fan like me. But mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, shit, shit, shit across the board. Um, but speaking of Injustice too, mm-hmm. which I mentioned a little while back, but I can't think of a better segue, so I'm going to reuse that. <laughs> uh, um, to continue. was officially announced this week i mean to the surprise of absolutely no one we all mm-hmm. like from the moment this game was announced we were like that the joker is going to be in it and then he leaked last week uh but he was officially announced this week so um he's probably the final character yeah so that brings ross to 29 which is not bad um i can't remember how many characters the last game had at launch probably like 25 um I sh- uh so yeah this is not bad it's just slightly bigger i heard rumors of it being a 40 character roster i'm glad that's not the case i i'm mm-hmm. I'm, I'm a big I, i'm not big on like gigantic roster Rosters, something yeah, when yeah. you have that many characters they start to feel less like individuals that many mm-hmm. um so of the 29 characters 16 are new and the game as a whole, it, I feel like it's got a nice mix between new characters, old characters, popular characters, and obscure characters. You know, you've got your Batman, your Superman, your Green Lantern, your Flash. But mm-hmm. you've also got your Doctor Fates, your Swamp Things, your Firestorms, um, your Black Canaries. I don't even I don't know if she counts as obscure anymore. Since yeah. She's on, like, uh, I feel like more people nowadays uh, know who Black Canary is. So... Yeah, unfortunately, we did not get the question, but that's what Injustice 3 is for. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yes. all in all, I, I feel like they did a pretty good roster. I'm hoping that Marvel's Cap, that M, Marvel's Capcom Infinite, I'm going to have to think of an easier way to say that. Because, you know, it's MVC3, MVC2, um, MVCI? That doesn't really roll up the tongue as well. I just call it, I it, it, just, call it just call it Marvel Infinite. Just call it that. It's not exactly a long I, title. <laughs> Yeah, Marvel Infinite, yeah. Uh, hopefully Marvel Infinite gives us a nice mix like that. Because, like, Marvel Infinite, and we're going to get to that later in the podcast. Like, we all know the roster is going to have, it's going to be chock full of Avengers. The same way Marvel vs. Capcom 2's roster was full of X-Men characters, um, mm. Infinite is going to be full of Avengers and Marvel Film Cinematic Universe characters. I hope that they give a nice mix. You know, we also get some of the more obscure characters. And, you know, we get some... We, we, we get a lot of returning characters from Marvel 3, but then we also get some newer characters, you know. Um, but anyway, we'll get to that later mm-hmm. in the podcast. But yeah, yeah, Injustice 2. Um, how do you feel about the Joker there, Tanner, and the roster? Uh, overall, I think the roster's pretty good. Um, Joker being in it, like, it's like, eh, whatever. I mean, like, it's, it's Joker. Like, uh, he's... I, I, like, I really like the character of the Joker. It's just him being in this game. I'm just like, eh, it's nothing really amazing or anything like that, you know. Um, like, uh, honestly, like, I, I think I think overall, that being said, I think overall the roster of the game I think is pretty good. There's a good mix of characters. There's not, like, the... It's not, like, 90% Batman characters, which was what our fear was when the game was originally yeah. being, you know, you know... Um, advertised so i'm pretty happy with the roster overall and uh i hope this game i hope this game is still a success though because i think i think i do like the fact that um i do like the fact that it, that how nether realm seems to work is that this is like their off game you know they do they do mortal Kombat, and then they do the injustice game um because if all they were doing was mortal Kombat, i, I would be i would get tired of that so i'm glad yeah. i'm glad that they at least like to mix it up a bit but yeah, overall, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, so our next topic, which I have mixed feelings about, um, is the uh, 2DS XL. Uh, so this was a, sorry? Uh, this was, uh, sorry, what were you going to say? Just to, I was going to say this was a surprise that I did not see this coming. I, I mean, I should have seen this coming because <laughs> Nintendo is known to do weird shit like this. So basically, uh, Nintendo announced the 2DS XL, uh, sorry, the new... 2ds xl that's a big that's actually a big point in this 
Um, so they announced that it's a cheaper version. Actually, all things considered, it's a relatively good deal because the a new 3DS XL costs about 250 to around 300, depending on which edition you get. Um, okay. This is this is a hundred and fifty dollars, so that is a pretty damn good steal, all things considered. Um, the it, you know it has the a second analog. Uh, it's a better. It's it runs better than the like the regular 3ds. Um, the only thing that I have a problem with this is that like it doesn't fix the main issue I have with the 3ds. Now the 3ds has a really good library. Like, it has probably one of the stronger video game libraries out there because there's so many games on the 3DS. Um, mm. And um, the new 3DS, you know, it does run better. Like, the games run better on it. And, um, <laughs> excuse me. And uh, I think I think there's a lot of potential with more games now. Because cause the fact that it has the other analog means that game, there's more, there's more opportunity for different games to be on it. Yeah. Um... The only problem I have is it's the screen. The screen is not great. And, um, like, because the Vita had an LCD screen. You know, the uh, the Switch has a really nice screen. My phone has a really nice screen. <laughs> and this is, like, it's kind of like this is the quality of screen that we are used to now. We're used to this high-quality, high-color fidelity screens now so that when you boot up your 3DS and you realize that this screen is just not up to snuff anymore, uh, it kind of limits the enjoyment of the experience. Now, if, there's, if, if somebody doesn't care that much about how games look, I can understand that people going like, ah, whatever, I don't, I don't care if the screen quality isn't, like, pristine, you know, uh, I, can, I can deal with that, then this is great, this is awesome. But um, for me, it's like now, um, now I'm like because I've been playing on my uh, on my Switch because I'm used to the higher quality screens and like better picture on portable devices. Part of me going back to a downgraded version is a little bit annoying. So I realize this isn't this isn't meant for me, like because I have a 3DS. There's literally there's no reason for me to get a new 3DS XL. Um, and part of me is kind of wants them to be pushing the Switch more than pushing the 3DS. But, you know, they have stated mm. that, they've stated that, um, whether I like it or not, they've stated that the 3DS isn't going anywhere and they haven't forgot about it. They want to still push it because it is one of the things that's making them money. You know, the Switch is making them money for sure, but the 3DS was making them money for a long, long time. And it still is to a certain extent. Um, so I understand why they want to push this, but part of me is like, just, dude, just, can you put your efforts into, like, getting, getting the Switch library to where it needs to be, um, instead of, you know, instead of giving us new versions of the 3D, because the thing is, is that, the reason why this is so ridiculous to me is because there's so many different versions of the, the DS or the 3DS, it's ridiculous, like... I'm tired of it because you know you had the, you had the 3ds, then you had the 3ds XL, and then you had the 2ds, and now you had then you had the new 3ds, and you had the new 3ds XL, and now we have the new 2ds XL. It's just ridiculous. It's insanity at this point. So, but uh, what did you think about all this? <laughs> this was like when I saw the headline. Honestly, I didn't even read it. I was like, oh, Nintendo doing Nintendo things. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah this is i mean the price is amazing 150 dollars for a handheld and like you mentioned i mean it plays all the 3ds's games mm -hmm. and like you mentioned the 3ds has one of the best libraries of any console mm -hmm. um definitely probably the best handheld library ever oh, so for sure yeah so like this is this is pretty good like if i had if i had more money i would probably pick this up like straight up for mm -hmm. 150 bucks this will make, because, like, I spend a lot of time on the bus, you know. It takes me, like, 40 minutes to get to school every day. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the reasons why I loved my Vita, until, you know, Sony stopped making games for the Vita. Um, <laughs> yeah, and so, so like, an, another handheld that, that I can just put in my jacket pocket and just, like, play, play like, short sessions on the bus for 150 bucks. That is a steal, in my humble, mm -hmm. humble opinion. However, like you said, 
what what are you trying to do here, Nintendo? Are you trying to kill off the 3DS? Because you know this is a very good way to kill off your own console. And if you know if you just wanna like phase the 3DS out and then bring this in, because like let's be honest, the 3D in the 3DS is a piece of shit. You know, like mm-hmm. okay, piece of shit is a strong word. It's irrelevant. Like there's I've no I've not met a single human being that was like yo. Yo, Yo, like I, I played with the three D of the three D S and I played without it and I can't I can't go back to playing two D games again. I haven't heard a single person say that. All, all I've heard was that it was nauseating, it's like it wasn't great. I've only heard negative things about the three D and the three D S. So you know, if, if this is their plan, they're like, Okay, the three D failed, mm-hmm. let's focus on just the D S part, you know, let's focus mm-hmm. on the games part. Then you know I I, I I mean it's it's confusing because the three D S is so successful, but at the same time it's It's not. It's it's not like. It's it's it does it, it makes sense. You know mm-hmm. they're, they're like they're okay that didn't work. Let's try something different. But like other, if if then then who is this marketed towards, and who like why split your market? Because both consoles play the same games, right? Yeah. So why? I don't get it. I mean, at the end of the day, it's just more money. Because, I mean, they're not losing money either way, I don't think. Yeah. So, yeah, I, no. I, guess, I guess no matter what happens, they still win. Yeah, like, like literally, I understand why they're doing this. Because this is essentially, like, this is essentially, this is for people that's like, all right, I don't have enough money for a Switch, but I want to buy something, you know, from Nintendo. Oh, look, there, uh, there's a new 2DS XL. It's really cheap. And it's pretty much half the price of what the new 3DS XL is. Sure, I'll, I'll, I'll jump on. I feel like this is meant for the people that essentially don't... They either can't get a Switch or they don't want to Switch, but they want to get a Nintendo product. So I can understand that, that that's the market for. That's what it's for. But it's still it's still like, ah, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like, for me, it's like, because there's a lot of potential with what the Switch can do, I want them to be pushing the Switch rather than pushing the 3DS because I feel as much as as much as I, I like as much as I like the 3DS overall I like it it has been pushed so much that there's no there's nowhere else to go <laughs> like like there's so much that the 3DS has that yeah. like it, it's done like it has it has everything it really needs it doesn't need anymore like I think they I think they just need to just like yeah, I think they need to like you know let it you know gracefully step out of the limelight, you know, and let let the new blood come in. But I don't know, I don't know. Uh, but you know what? <laughs> as much as I, uh, as much as this this uh, 3ds, uh, 2ds XL nonsense kind of confused me, uh, the next piece of news didn't confuse me but made me laugh. <laughs> so Call of Duty released their. Um, released their new trailer for their new Call of Duty game. And guess what? They're going back to the past. It's World War II. Call of Duty World War II. And this shit is hilarious to me. Because uh, it's like, because that, that's, um, it's essentially them going like, well, Infinite Warfare didn't sell that well. And, um, it, I mean, granted, according to our bet, it did sell well enough. <laughs> Um, and, um, and, uh, they decided to go back to the past and go back to World War II. I find it interesting because, um, the, um, because, like, the mentality of them, like, okay, they like, people really liked what Battlefield 1 did, and whether or not Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, um, was a more successful game, it was not exactly a critically successful game. Um, compared to like Battlefield One, no. so I find it interesting that it's like, well, it was the more it, it did sell a lot more. You know, someone on this podcast predicted. Just, yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Someone, someone did. Um, but I find it funny because it's like, yeah, like uh, they decided, like you know, hey, we're uh, we're going back to the past now because uh, that seems to be the popular thing. And uh, I guess the other reason is that like this this one's being made by Sledgehammer. And I don't particularly think Sledgehammer is a good developer. I think <laughs> I think they are the weakest out of the three, in my opinion. Because uh, it's Sledgehammer, Triarch, and Infinity Ward. Yeah. And uh, I think they are the weakest, in my opinion. Yeah. 
Triarch is the best now. I mean, he used to be Infinity Ward, and then Infinity Ward left to become, um, um, what are they called? Respawn. Respawn, yeah. So, I mean, Sledgehammer, I've only made Modern Warfare 3 and Advanced Warfare. Advanced Warfare wasn't terrible. It wasn't Ghosts, at least. It wasn't Ghosts, <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, I just... I for some reason I completely blocked everything about ghosts in my memory. So you bringing that up? <laughs> oh, but that does bring me bring back some me memories of Call of Duty Dog. Call of Duty Dog was the best. Call of Duty Dog was the best. That was the only good thing to come out of that shit game. Um, but but yeah yeah, it's funny how everything old is new again, right? Um, mm -hmm. Call of Duty was originally the franchise that. Um, that took us away from the boring, uh, from the mundanity, whatever, from the boring World War Two shooters. You know, they came out with Modern Warfare and was a breath of fresh air while EA was still making, oh my God, it's just amazing how, how everything goes full circle. Mm -hmm. While EA was still making Medal of Honor games and, you know, creating games in World War Two that everyone was tired of, these dudes gave us Modern Warfare. And, and now, while these dudes were still making modern games, um, Battlefield 1 comes in and takes us back into the past, and now they're following them, and it's just like, maybe this is, maybe it's time for you guys to stop. Obviously, they won't. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, maybe it's time for you guys to stop, because you're obviously running out of ideas. <laughs> like, seriously, World War II. World War II? That's, that's, that's your... That's your I mean, the game is going to sell well. I can already tell. Oh, mixtape coming soon. Um, but seriously, World War Two. We haven't had enough of that. Of the, of that. Gosh, I, I wonder who's going to win this. I wonder how this is going to play out. Um, I've never seen this story before at yeah. all. Oh my God, Call of Duty. Why would you die? I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm going off track here. Please continue. Well, talking. for for me, it's like it's it's funny because it's like World War Two has been done to death at this point. But it's like to it, death. Like to literally to death because there's there's so many there's so many. World War II military shooters, because like it's we've seen it. We've seen every everything that you could possibly do with this particular era of history, has been done at this point. Like there's nothing left to do, unless you start unless you start adding magical bullshit to it. There's literally oh, nothing. There's nothing else you can do. So that was why when they were talking about when when Battlefield One did World War One. I was like, okay, World War One hasn't been explored as often as World War Two has, and I understand the reasoning behind that because, like, you know, it's it's a video game thing where it's like, look, we're like this, you're you're the hero, you're the military man who's gonna save the world, and you're gonna fight the evil Nazis, right? And evil the, Nazis. the evil Nazis, and it's like it's like from a from that perspective, I understand where it's like it's a weird thing. It's kind of dark to say, but World War Two is a lot more marketable to a certain extent than World War One. Yeah, because World War One was just a fucking shit show for everyone involved. <laughs> because like there was there wasn't like there wasn't like a defining evil like villain, I guess at least from from one nation's perspective. Yeah, in World War One. Although you could argue that it was still Germany that started it, but like it's 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 it's, it's hard to get into. Because uh, there's a whole lot. It, it can't be just like you can't just you can't just attribute to, to one group of people being the root cause of World War One or even yeah. World War Two for that matter. But there's this mentality with World War Two that oh Nazis yeah they're evil, like <laughs> and and yeah that's the thing where it's like yeah I, I guess it's not even that it's like World War Two has been done to death in almost all media, like yeah. we've seen. Tons and tons of video games in World War Two. We've seen tons and tons of movies that take place in World War Two, and we've seen tons and tons of shows that take place in World War Two. And there's tons of books. Like everything that can be done about World War Two has been done up to this point. So I find it perfect. I find it so perfect that Call of Duty has decided to to take up the torch once again. <laughs> you, you know what? You're right. Like I mean, it's pretty fitting. That world, that Call of Duty, a, a franchise that has been played out, is mm -hmm. adapting World War II, a war that has been played out. Um, but they, apparently, they're trying to add uh, um, strong female characters to their 
uh, game. Apparently, the unit that you're going to be running is going to be a white dude being leader because you know. Yeah. Um, and then, and then, um, and then it's gonna have a female character, a black character, and I can't remember what the fourth one is. Probably a gay character. Um, uh, um, but, but, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It's anyway. That's that. That was just an aside. You know, I, 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 I don't even know. Um, Dave, Dave. I'm sorry. I'm trying. To, I'm trying to think of stuff to say about this game. But it's a new Call of Duty, people. You, like, you shouldn't buy it, but I know you're all going to. <laughs> so, you know, just go out there. Let's, let's, get it, let's get it over with. It's going to have Nazi zombies. It's going to have a season pass. It's going to have, like, three editions, all of which are completely overpriced. Um, it's a new Call of Duty. Um, anyway, unless you want to keep talking about this, I'm more interested in talking about our next bit of news. Yeah, why don't you go? Why don't you take it away? <laughs> okay, so we got a massive massive news blowout with marvel versus capcom with marvel infinite <laughs> with marvel infinite so um first things first we got is we got a story trailer uh showing giving us a basic idea of um of giving us a basic idea of what the story is going to be first of all the game is going to actually have a story mode mm-hmm. so hats off to them for that <laughs> <laughs> because because like you know story you know i, I was criticizing um battlefronts 2 uh, last podcast for uh, advertising itself that oh we have a single player campaign and it's gonna have a story in it. But fighting games historically do not have story modes outside of Nether Realms games. Fighting games do not have like they have like arcade mode and that's usually it. So you know this is this is, this is story mode and it seems like they're actually trying with this one. So the story is gonna revolve around Sigma and Ultron fusing together. They they got all six six Infinity Stones, they fused together into Ultron Sigma, really original name, guys. Yeah. And they fused the Capcom and Marvel worlds together, and then the heroes from both worlds are going to like band together to try to stop them. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's the basic story. The story trailer also revealed a bunch of new characters. I mean, no real surprises here. Hulk, Thor, um, Hawkeye, Rocket Raccoon, um, and Ultron uh, from the Marvel side. The, the Capcom side was, I mean, not surprising, but this, like... I'm not surprised these characters are in the game, but if they didn't make it, I wouldn't have been surprised either. And that's Chris Strider, uh, Chris and Strider. Um, yeah, one thing, one interesting thing about this though is that the fact that Ultron Sigma is the primary villain, and the fact that Ultron Sigma gets all six Infinity Stones, throws into question if Thanos is going to make it in the base game. Now, I'm still a hundred percent sure Thanos is going to be in this game. There's absolutely no way. The big villain from the Marvel Cinematic Universe does not make it into Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. Like, I just don't see how. But it does make me question if he's going to make the base game or if he's going to be DLC. That's mm. pretty much um, That's pretty much it. But yeah, you know, shout-outs to them. Um, the story looks... I mean, it looks like shit, if I'm being completely honest. <laughs> but at least they're trying. I'll give well, them for that. me, it's like, it looks, it looks stupid, but I could see it being fun. Like I, yeah. I could see it being like a fun stupid, like like that interaction with Rocket and Mega Man made me laugh, and I was like, okay, okay, if they if they're gonna do if they're gonna do stupid shit like that, I could see myself enjoying that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So give them, uh, like, I give them credit at the very least. They're putting the effort in, and uh, you know, looking forward. Uh, they also they, they also announced a ton of um um uh, gameplay details. So the first is, you know, in 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 an attempt to make the game more accessible, no, no, they they haven't hid, they have not hid the fact that they are trying to make this more accessible. It's the reason why they went to two v two. It's the reason why they took away assists, and you know they've said that they're not making it accessible in the name of killing complexity, which I'm mm-hmm. fine with if they pull it off. Now, uh, to go back to that, in a, to add to the accessibility, they added an auto combo system. So how how this is gonna work is that if you just mash, if you mash light. Mm-hmm. It does a basic combo for you. So like maybe like a four string, like a four hit string on the ground launch into a four hit string into okay. like a knockdown. And, so similar, and similar to um, Ultimax. 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 A, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And that, you see, Ultimax had an auto combo system, and that was not a that game was complex. So like I'm fine with them adding this. I'm completely fine with this. Um, mm. In fact, I like this kind of stuff because you know, like like I said with Guilty Gear. I've been trying to get my friends into it. There's a lot of friends who just won't touch the game because it's too complex for them, right? So I'm mm-hmm. like, that if you can 
add a little bit of accessibility to make people feel like they know what they're doing to mm -hmm. the, to make them stick around and learn the more complex stuff and you keep the complex stuff in because like i have no doubt this auto combo system mm -hmm. these are not going to be optimized combos period you know mm -hmm. and i'm for, you know as long as that's the case as long as you like you can get by but you you're not doing like 80 percent damage with these things then i'm fine mm -hmm. um then you know in regards to the roster so far i'm not feeling it um but it's because most of the characters they've revealed are obvious inclusions. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping that's what they're trying to do. They want to get the obvious heroes out of the way first, and then mm -hmm. they give us the juiciest stuff, like, down the line. Because, yeah, like, right now, you know, this roster, there's a lot of people who got revealed, and I don't even remember when they got revealed, because I just assumed they were going to be in the game. Yeah. Captain America, Iron Man, Hulk, Thor, there was no way these characters were going to make it in. Ryu, Chun-Li, um, like, I can't remember when Chun-Li got revealed. Ryu, Chun Li, Morrigan, Dior's gonna be in. Rocket yeah. Raccoon is probably gonna make it. Hawkeye is probably gonna make it. Um, so no big surprises here. Now to get into the combat system, this is the juicy stuff. So mm -hmm. when they announced that they were getting rid of assists, what worried me the most about it was that what I loved about Marvel Three was building your team. And learning all the really, really cool stuff you could do. So, for example, you could pick Sentinel and you pick Doom behind him. Mm -hmm. And then, no, 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 uh, Spencer. You pick Sentinel and you pick Spencer. Spencer has this, this assist where he shoots his, his grapple right. into the air, right? If you shoot, so, so Sentinel spit, that is standing laser that he shot from his mouth. He, he didn't really have any follow-up to it. However, if you did the spit while calling that assist, it would pull them in. And you could get a full combo, right? I love right. finding stuff like that with my characters. And I was worried that when they took away assists, you wouldn't be able to. Mm -hmm. However, they announced that there's a new tag system in the game. How, so in the old in the older Marvel games, tagging was suicide. You never wanted to tag because your character came in and they stood still for like uh, X amount of time. That yeah. is not the case anymore. Your characters aren't as vulnerable when they tag in. But more importantly, you can tag... You can cancel moves with tags. So, for example, I can do a Hadouken with Ryu and then tag in Chun-Li, and the Hadouken will stay on screen, and then Chun-Li will come in behind it. I can do Ooh, okay. a I can do a super with Ryu and tag in Chun-Li. So, like, I'll do, like, Ryu's beam super, tag Chun-Li in. Ryu stays on screen doing his beam super, but I'm controlling Chun-Li. It's... it's it should allow for some very, very interesting interactions. I can mm -hmm. already think of some off the top of my head. If Dante makes it into the game, fingers crossed. Dante had this one super that he did where he, like, mm -hmm. shot a bunch of bullets and it put the opponent in block stun for a very long time. You can do that, tag into, like, say, Wolverine, and yeah. then do, like, a bunch of mix-ups while they're blocking the super. You know, it's it's it should allow for some more... Um, interesting stuff and it should it it should at the very least give you some options when it comes to building your team it, it, sh it should make team construction imp more important mm -hmm. they also showed off like a little bit more of the infinity stones so they showed three um the power um uh, time and space mm -hmm. so every stone has two uses you have your basic use of the stone where you just you hit the stone button on your controller and you and uh, and you do the thing so like for example the power stones thing is that you do this like small attack that causes a wall bound seems kind of shit and seems mostly like combo filler but we'll see mm -hmm. um the time stone gives you a a dash sort of like um i'm trying to think of, of a good example um um it's just a, it's a teleport you know you just yeah. go through the person I don't know if it has any invulnerability. It looks like it does, and it seems like it'd be good for some pretty cool mix-ups, you know? Uh, unfortunately, if we still had assists, then it'd be cool for some really cool mix-ups, but anyway. And then the space stone lets you pull the enemy closer. So I can definitely see grapplers getting some good use out, out of this. You know, you do like a... Or you can do like some crazy research. You do a block string that pushes them too far away, do the stone, pull them back in, and then command grab, command grab. Then there's this other thing called infinity storm. This is the game's comeback mechanic, you know? Mm -hmm. um, you have a bar that fills up whenever you use your Infinity uh, Stone ability and whenever you take damage. Once it hits a certain point, you can activate your Infinity Storm, which it's different based on the character. Um, the Power Stones, the Power Storm is like your character starts to do more damage and all of your attacks cause like wall or ground bounces. Mm -hmm. the, um, this, the Time Stone increases your speed and it gives you like um, like an infinite uh, teleport dash. 
the space stone is the really interesting one because it like puts the opponent in a box and they cannot move. Sorry, they, they can move, but it can only move within the confines of that box. And this box is not very big. So, right. so yeah, it's it's it. This 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 further makes me feel like the space stone is going to be used very heavily by grapplers because mm-hmm. can you imagine? Like playing Zangief versus Dalsim, and then making it impossible for Dalsim to run away from. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like you hit him with that, and he's stuck in spots. And it's like, yeah, now hold all these SPDs. So, I mean, you know, they, they seem pretty strong, but like they don't, but they don't seem. Because X Factor was a bad mechanic. I think I think everybody at this point, you know, thinking back. Marvel 3 would have been a better game if there was no X Factor in it. So, like, um, the, the, you know, when you, have, when you have comeback mechanic, people always get a little worried. But, like, at the very least, on paper, this does not seem as bullshit as X Factor. Mm-hmm. Finally, and probably the craziest thing, for me anyway, is this new mechanic called the counter switch mechanic. So, one okay. thing that everybody, everybody prayed for in Marvel 3 was a burst. Because okay. one issue that Marvel 3 had was that every single point, you, like, when we got to a certain point in the game, most characters had one-touch kills, right? Yeah. So you just you just got a hit, and you ran your combo, you killed the opponent, you, you corner-carried them, you got them in the corner, and then you ran your mix-up uh, mm-hmm. on the incoming character, you got a hit, did, the, did another combo, one-touch kill, ran another mix-up, killed three characters. You could kill... You could, you, you could guess wrong three times and lose the game, right? Right. So... People joked about how it was, you know, it was a one-player game, you know, or you were just watching a movie because if you got hit, you just sat there and you couldn't do anything. Right. The counter switch mechanic is looking to change that. Um, so how this is going to work is at the cost of two bars. Yeah. While you are getting comboed, you do the input, whatever the input is, mm-hmm. and you tag in your second character. Now, your first character is still getting comboed, but your second character is on screen. So, you then have to figure out how you are going to interrupt that combo. Okay, okay. Sorry, you were going to say something? No, I was going to say, no, that's interesting, because essentially, you you take, you're, you're, like, you're you're basically, like, you know, Ryu's getting combo, you do this, you send in Chen-Li, and Chen-Li's got to figure out a way to stop the combo on Ryu, essentially. Yeah, pretty much. And it's cool. So, like, um, TBC had a burst mechanic, but it was actually a burst mechanic. It was called Mega Crash. It cost two bars of, as well, and how it worked was in the middle of a combo, you hit whatever buttons, and you just burst it out of it. Mm-hmm. Um, however, this mechanic is a lot more interesting, you know, because it's, it's, it's weird. Um, I'm really looking forward to trying this one out because I can, there's, there's some issues I can see where if you, if you, if you counter switch in specific spots in a combo, you might be able to punish the to punish the other person but beating up on your character which could be problematic but and then the, the real the real question is how baitable is this going to be because yeah. if if the beat it then you know then then it creates that cool um, mind game you're like okay he's going to counter switch here so then you bait it but then mm-hmm. he's like okay i know he's going to bait it so i'm not going to counter switch and then he just drops the combo and it's like a free burst, and you know you have that little uh, man game. The other thing is that, like I said, it's not like a burst because it breaks the combo. This doesn't break the combo, so you have to counter switch. So, so you, it's not a situation in like Ulti Gear where you can wait. Mm-hmm. You can wait till you're just about to die, and then you burst. In this case, you can't because because if you do, by the time your character comes on screen and jumps up to try to inter- interrupt the combo. <laughs> <laughs> the other one is already dead, and all you've done is wasted two bars. By the way, the maximum amount of bars you can get in this game is four. So two bars is half of half, half of your yeah. bars. Yeah. So this is pretty interesting. At the very least, this all this effectively kills one touch kills. Mm. Um, it's going to be very, very, very difficult to touch of death anyone in this game. Which I don't hear. I, I can't imagine any in a two v two game. I can't imagine anyone is crying about that. So yeah. Well, I mean, like touch of death can be kind of fun to watch when you see it for the first time. But if if you're because yeah. in in this situation, I'm because obviously this they're going to be pushing this for Evo and this is going to be the next big thing. I could see I could see that this system being a lot more entertaining to watch than seeing the touch of death because it's as cool as seeing the co- like the the insta death combos um, is like 
it, 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 I feel like it would be more fun to see people get out of those insta-kill combos. So Yeah, yeah, like like you said, insta-kill combos are fun the first time you see them, you know? Mm-hmm. But when it becomes a staple of a game, it's not fun. Like, mm-hmm. it's not fun for the person... It's not fun for anyone, to be honest. Because, like, if I'm playing a fighting game, I want... Um, I, you know, like, people joke about how you turn it into a one-player game. I'm like, if I wanted to play a one-player game, I'd play a one-player game. Mm-hmm. If I wanted to play a fighting game, I want to, like, outthink my opponent, you know? Mm-hmm. Um... So yeah, I, I'm 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 not I'm not crying. I'm not crying about it. A couple of other small things. Um, uh, characters stay ca- dead. Characters stay on screen, which has led people to speculate that one of the Infinity Stones is going to let you bring back a character. Uh, we'll see. You know, this is 100% speculation. Let's. I'm just throwing that out there. Um, uh, push block. They've changed push block. Um, you, in in the old game, how it worked was, you know, if you are if you're in Blockstone and you push block, it pushes the opponents away. So you know, it was a, it was a defensive option. It was ways around it. Now you can. I don't know if they've changed that, but if you push block projectiles now, it reflects them back. So this reduces projectile spam because one character in Marvel Three, Morrigan, she had this thing where she could duplicate herself mm-hmm. and then she could like just fill the screen with fireballs, turn the game into a bullet hell shooter, and it was just not fun. You know, let's just yeah. call it like it is. It wasn't fun to watch. It wasn't fun to play against. It wasn't fun to play. It was, you know, one player shit. So this should, uh, at the very least, it seems like they're trying to do this to alle- alleviate that. Um, um, all in all, this is interesting. Like I'm loving everything I've heard so far. The game still looks like shit. Let let, let me just um, like graphically, I hate the way this game looks. The UI looks like crap. The characters look shitty. Like Rocket Raccoon looked sickly in that cutscene that we saw with him. Mm-hmm. And Mega Man, and like all in all, the I, game, I, I mean, think, I thought Mega Man looked fine. If I mean, Mega Man looked fine. Ultron looks really cool. I love the way Ultron looked. I was. So, it's funny when they showed the trailer of Ultron and Sigma fusing. When they, I, I liked the way Ultron looked, and then he fused with Sigma, and I hated the way he looked. So I was glad when I saw that he was actually like Ultron was a playable character, and it wasn't just Ultron Sigma. Mm-hmm. Um. But yeah, in general, I don't like the art style that they've chosen. But I don't care. You know, I, I, it's not that big of a deal. The gameplay mm-hmm. sounds really really good mm-hmm. finally there's a big i don't know if you've heard the meme when's marvel <laughs> oh yeah 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 i know i know where that i where did that come from exactly because it's okay, like okay okay so when marvel got announced in 20 when marvel came out in 2011 right you know street yeah. fighter was the big street fighter 4 was the big game so yeah. you know what would happen a lot was that people would be streaming street fighter 4 or blaze blue or something like that but then everybody wanted to, everybody wanted to see marvel right mm-hmm. so people would just hop into chat and it'd be like you know when's marvel like mm-hmm. you know when when is the Mar- when is marvel going to start because I, I i don't i'm only here for marvel mm-hmm. so it became a meme and then you know like People just ran with it, so now it's actually a thing. But anyway, to answer the question, where's Marvel? September nineteenth is the date. Is the is, is the date that this game is dropping, which is, which is a lot sooner than I thought, and actually worries me a little bit because Capcom is not known for releasing complete video games. Perhaps I wonder if we've talked about that concept before. <laughs> no, no, definitely not. Definitely not with Capcom. But yeah, September nineteenth is what four five months away mm-hmm. and we barely we've barely seen any of the roster now to be fair with e3 next month evo the month after comic-con the month after that we're mm-hmm. probably gonna in, in in between those three um, events we're probably getting like 10 or 15 characters yeah you know so so i guess that that makes that makes sense but um um you know i'm, I'm excited i'm actually really really excited i'm like this 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 um this news release alleviated a lot of my fears with this game mm-hmm. and I, i'm actually i'm i'm not willing to like to 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 jump in just yet but i'm 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 close this this got me really it it, it made me remember how much i loved marvel and it made me realize how much i missed it so mm-hmm. so i'm really looking forward to this i'm really looking forward to seeing more of this game no, for sure. And honestly, everything that we've talked about about it, it seems like, yeah, it seems like they have this new system, they're trying to get new things, and it seems like it overall is going to be a good experience. And I know we joke about it, but I feel like the way that they are handling this game compared to how they handled Street Fighter V, I feel like they've learned their lesson to a certain extent, but we'll have to see. We'll have to we'll see. Have to see we'll but have it to does see. seem that way. I mean, first of all, even with Street Fighter Five, they've 
improve. You know, like mm. if I bought Street Fighter Five now as opposed to a year ago, I wouldn't hate the game as much as I currently do. Mm. You know, um, it is a much better game yes. now than it was a year ago. So even with Street Fighter Five, they've learned. But yeah, even with this, because you know we're talking about how they've been marketing the game, they're like that. Oh yeah, the game is gonna have a full story mode. It's gonna have arcade mode. It's gonna have mission mode. It's gonna have like training mode at launch. Um, the one thing that it did that has some people kind of worried is that, you know, they announced the season pass already. There's going to be six post-launch characters. But, you know me, for me, I'm like, if the game launches with 30 characters, then I don't care, you know, yeah. if, you, if you're charging me for six extra, yeah, right? Exactly. Um, so that's Dante. Is it, is it one of the DLC characters? That's the only <laughs> character. Dante and Sentinel. Those are the, yo, give me back my homies. Give me Dante and give me Sentinel. <laughs> um, um... Dante especially, actually. I really, really, really hope Dante makes it. Odds for Sentinel aren't very high, you know? Like, um, first of all, we don't even know if the X-Men are going to make it in. But if the X-Men make it in, they're going to be in a minority because the X-Men aren't big in the Marvel Cinematic Universe right now. Mm -hmm. Then on top of so, like, like if the X-Men make it in, we're, we're probably getting Wolverine, maybe Storm, maybe Magneto. So the odds of getting Sentinel isn't, aren't very high. So uh, mm -hmm. I wonder if, because, you know, this game seems to be boring a lot from TVC. I wonder if we're going to get giant characters. Maybe. Uh, honestly, I don't know. Uh, it could go either way. Uh, but, like... It, it... I just want Rathalos. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah! I wanted Rathalos with Marvel 3. I didn't get him. And I was like, okay... Okay, that was your chance. Because I wanted giant characters in Marvel 3. To be fair, giant characters, like, like I'm just going to throw it out right now. Realistically speaking, giant characters are a bad idea. They were not very balanced in TVC. Um, Gold Lython was garbage, and PVX40 was completely broken. So there was there was no media with these yeah. characters. I mean, to be fair, even though even though like Raphalos would be ridiculous, part of me does want to see how stupid that would look. Like, cause like everything about like Raphalos, like I'm from a fighting like from a monster hunter perspective, Raphalos makes sense. But like from a from a from a fighting game perspective, I'm like, okay, what would Raphalos' moves be? Okay, he'd have a fireball, he'd have his tail spin, and then he'd have his maybe jump claw attack. And he'd I have flights. I mean, you know, but Marvel is a game with flight, right? That's true. This this is true. Yeah, so he could have flight. He could have like a move where he like scorches the ground. Um, he could see, have like see, a grapple. For, yeah, for me, for me, it's like I would be, I would be ha if I, if we're if we're. If for a character that would make more sense from a fighting game perspective, I would say Zenoger would make more sense. How do you spell that? Uh, Z I N Ogre. Okay, there you go. Um, and because like the Zenoger, he can do backflip, uh, tail swings. He has mm. projectiles. He shoots three little electric orbs. Uh, he can go Super Saiyan. Um, and shoot faster electric orbs. Uh, he's got lots of really cool, like, jump attacks, flips, and stuff like that. So he would make, some for some reason, him being in Marvel would make more sense because he's a, he's a fast-moving character. Whereas Raphalos, oh, okay. is, Raphalos is, like, a fast character, but he's not, like, he's not what I would consider, like, the fast, fast, like, you know. But he, he, he is the one that's the most famous. So if, if they did end up bringing a monster in a character, it would have to be him. Because no one else, like, as, po as much as I like Zenogre, like, I guarantee you, you had to type that in because you don't know what Zenogre is. <laughs> I don't. I don't even know how to spell it. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. But anyway, overall, I'm yeah. pretty. I'm pretty happy with what we're seeing so far. Um, but yeah. before we wrap things up, we got our question of the day from the lovely J Streets. Shout out to J Streets. And uh, he's asking us: Should video game developers form a union? So I'm very interested to see what your opinion on this is. This is a tough one. I did a bit of research and stuff, and um, the the this the straightforward answer is yes, because mm -hmm. like it's no secret that being a video game developer is not an easy job. Mm -hmm. They the there's a they're mistreated a lot, and it's 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 overall a shitty job. Mm -hmm. A lot of people do it because they love it, not because it's a it's a nine five. No, but no, a lot of people do it because of the passion, not because of the money, right? Mm -hmm. So I definitely think 
that they sh they should unionize to protect themselves and like video game development is growing up you know like part of the reason why there is no video game union is because like what 20 30 years ago mm -hmm. um you know most video game developers were a couple of guys in their garage like yeah you know, Hotline Miami, you know, the game that I love so much was made by two guys in their underwear in their apartment. You know, <laughs> so, so like most of these big, big companies that we know now were started by a couple of guys in a garage, in a basement, in an mm -hmm. apartment. So, so there's, you know, there's most video, video companies are just starting to really become um, um, legit, official, yeah. you know, big companies with like, with like you know giant buildings and 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 investors right so now that that's happened um i feel like you need a union to pr protect the, the the employees mm -hmm. um now now one thing i'm not sure of is that if there's a union will it affect everyone that's a good question because my big worry uh, like for me if they were to make if they were to make a video game union I feel like they there would have to be. The problem is, is that like I don't want to say that they, I don't want to necessarily like implore exclusivity, but the problem is, is that um, as much as we talk about indie developers and really good uh, good developers producing games, there are a lot of groups of video game developers that they are exploiting systems. Um, and like you know green light is a fucking shit show and i don't really feel like i want to put I, I i don't really feel like those people need to be protected mm -hmm. um and i and that's the biggest fear is that if this if a union came in i could see because the problem is is that there's a lot of situations in which these um things like this can be exploited um I don't know, that, but that's the thing is, is that like I would, it's kind of like I want, I want a union for the good developers, you know, <laughs> and um, but I, I don't know, it, it, it's a situation in which I feel like there, there should be protection, like there should, like there are video game developers that they just get completely fucked, and uh, there's no way that they can save themselves, because yeah. um, that's why, well that's what happens is that you know you get a bunch of video game developers, they come together, they make a team. And uh, then a really bad thing happens, like, you know, just did some bad things during game development or outside the, the scenario or whatnot happens, and then they have to split. They have to go and scatter to the four winds, and usually, usually they get picked up by people, but sometimes they don't, and that really sucks. And sometimes it's like, even though they get picked up by people, the, the, the passion of being their own team is kind of lost when they're under a bigger, you know house i guess if you if i if that makes sense that so makes sense. i i don't i don't know it, it's really hard to say i still feel like this is something that should definitely be explored you know absolutely because it always saddens me when when i see like a developer that had a lot of potential and just a really bad situation just kind of made um things just go you know shit shit up so I don't know. I, I feel like I feel like a, I'm, I'm not saying a union would be a bad idea, uh, but I am saying that a union would have to it would it would have to be really well thought out. Yeah. And as much as I'd hate to say it, I feel like there would have to be some exclusivity to avoid the because uh, the problem is is that when I because green light for me is the perfect example of a pr of a problem system in which everyone can try, everyone can give it a shot. And when everyone can give it a shot, you're always going to get those groups of people that are going to exploit everything in their power. And I wouldn't want to see that happen if, if, they, if a union became a thing. I don't know. I guess that's my thoughts on the matter. Yeah, yeah, I, um, yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. I, um, you, you want to, we want to, we want to protect the development because i mean didn't he win like worst company in the world three years in a row or something like yeah, that something so, like that yeah yeah so so yeah we want to protect the developers and you know a union might be the best way to do that you know protect them from, from yeah mm -hmm. so so i'm i'm all for i'm all for a union i can't think of a downside unfortunately i tried to do a bit of research into this but like 
this is also it's it's hard. It, you know, I I, I got I, I got a little bit of information, but I didn't get enough to find any downsides to a union. I'm sure there is, but unfortunately, I just couldn't find them. Um, so so yeah. Yeah, this is this is where we this is where we stand. Yeah, like I mean, like the the one obvious downside is that it, it, it means that the developers have to pay into the union because it's essentially money that can be spent on the game is being spent on making sure that they're safe. You know, if things go bad, and yeah. to a certain extent, it depends on how pricey the union is. To a certain because if the union is ridiculously like pricey. And, like, it, it doesn't make sense for, like, a low-income developer to, um, to pay into, then it, it defeats the whole purpose. But I do feel like it should definitely be explored, for sure, for sure. But really good question, Jay Streets. And if you got a question, uh, don't forget to leave it in the comment section. I'll make sure to answer it in the next podcast. And as always, this was your host, Freedom Liberty, and... Boaz, Muhammad Yusuf. We'll see you guys next time. Take care.